replies to my recent Christian Zionism videos introduced me to a significant source of anti-Zionism from those indoctrinated into the serpent seed heresy, which is rooted in early Gnostic writings that were rejected by church fathers including Arrhenius and Augustine. The serpent seed concept advances the scripturally unsupportable notion that the serpent in the Garden of Eden had sex with Eve through which Cain was conceived and thus Cain was actually Satan's son rather than Adam's son. But who does scripture indicate Cain's father was? And Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said I have gotten a man from the Lord specifically not from the serpent or Satan but from the Lord by way of Adam. I don't think blasphemy is too strong of a word to apply to the lie that Cain was Satan's rather than Adam's biological son that the Lord gave Adam and Eve. A version of the Torah, Now the man knew his wife, Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain. And she said, I have acquired a man with the Lord. From a Hebrew interlinear, and the human, he knew Eve, woman of him, and she is becoming pregnant, and she is giving birth Cain, and she is saying, I acquired man with Yahweh. The Hebrew term Yada, translated as new, meaning to know a person carnally. Which, of course, Adam knew Eve and she became pregnant, so that was a given. Those that adhere to the serpent seed lie must reject the plain truth of Genesis 4.1, regardless of what version or resource is considered. A Pentecostal preacher and demonstrated false prophet named William Branham is credited as being the 20th century father of this heresy, followed by a televangelist named Arnold Murray who advances his own unique version of this lie through his Shepherd's Chapel TV show that boasts millions of viewers. Racist groups employ this lie to claim that dark-skinned people and Jews are descended from Cain and are thus fathered by Satan. In Arnold Murray's unique spin on this heresy, he assigned the name of the tribe of the Kenites to the offspring of this fictitious union and then conveniently claims they just happen to be the Jews that live in Israel to advance his anti-Zionism. Besides being a demonstrated false prophet, as Branham before him, Murray is well aware of the racist nature of his doctrine but pleads that he is not racially motivated. The serpent seed is a doctrine of the flesh with a focus on genetic fiction rather than on the condition of a person's heart. I would imagine that most of Murray's viewers are at first duped into watching this seemingly innocent, ravening wolf in sheep's clothing show before wising up, which shouldn't take long since he hurls epithets like yo-yos at those that criticize his unique heresy. The person most recognized as utilizing this doctrine of devils to further his nefarious goal was Adolf Hitler, and it resulted in the genocide of millions of Jews. Whether actually believing the serpent seed heresy or simply using it as convenient glue toward group cohesion, it should come as no surprise that it is embraced today among Christian identity and British Israelism groups, skinheads, Nazis, white supremacists, the Ku Klux Klan, and Satanists like Madame Blavatsky who said the Jewish God was identical with Cain, son of Eve by Satan. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. What kind of fruit are Nazis, white supremacists, and the Ku Klux Klan, let alone Satanists? Rather than accepting the plain truth of Scripture, Murray's anti-Semitic followers relished the opportunity to join others in persecution of Jews and so eagerly embrace and thus easily indoctrinate themselves into his 
Hitlerian racist and bigot breeding heresy, which he embellishes with false exegesis of other passages contrived through Murray's machinations. This as if the demonstrated false prophet Arnold Murray's false presumptions and erroneous conclusions could nullify the truth of Genesis 4.1 as understood through nearly 2,000 years of universal Christian core doctrine. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers. Having itching ears, they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. Murray suggests that two Kenites were on board Noah's Ark, or that Kenites somehow otherwise survived the flood. However, the reason for the flood in the first place was to punish and destroy evil. Yet Murray suggests that a forefather of the very group he demonizes today as the synagogue of Satan apparently somehow cheated God and survived the flood. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. To avoid the truth, Murray suggests that I will destroy man as a figure of speech which meant that God would destroy more or less every man. However, scripture affirms that Noah, his wife, and his three sons and their wives were the only humans that survived the flood. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. Please do a web search like Hitler Serpent Seed for yourself, or click on the second link below this video to review our forum thread on this twisted doctrine of demons. Amazingly, none of Murray's followers can, or even try to, deny the fact that they embrace this doctrine right alongside Nazi skinheads in the KKK. There was such a pitch battle against truth on Murray's Wikipedia bio page that it had to be removed. I was introduced to this doctrine by one of Arnold Murray's sorely deceived followers, who began our chat by declaring, I am not part of any of the groups you mentioned, which may be true, but that doesn't change the fact that they share the same lie and are fruit of the same anti-Zionist tree. Before I discovered the Arnold Murray connection, this YouTuber kept insisting that he arrived at his unique future-styled eschatology within his serpent seed context through independent Bible study. Not surprisingly, I later discovered that his YouTube channel is larded with videos of Murray's show. I could have saved a lot of time if I'd focused on his early declaration. For instance, there is no way Cain is Adam's son. There were other subjects in the post that distracted me initially. Another giveaway of those indoctrinated into this cult is their use of terms like fake Jews in reference to the millions of Israeli Jews. When I pointed out the vast volume of websites that condemn Hitler's and Murray's heresy and expose racism and bigotry it breeds, Murray's followers suggested it isn't Murray's doctrine that's a failure but rather the internet that's broken. In addressing his critics on his own website regarding this demonic deception, Arnold Murray himself admits what about teaching serpent seed? I make no apology for teaching the word of God. Seems to boil down to a desire to persecute Jews by demonizing their restoration to their land of Israel that so many Christians and Jews recognize as a fulfillment of Bible prophecy by instead claiming that the millions of Jews in Israel are not Jews but are 
fake Jews declared by Murray to be Kenites. For example, Murray preached beginning in 1948 when the Kenites that are now in Jerusalem where they ought not be. And while falsely prophesying from his contrived and failed parallels to the Old Testament, he said, first siege happened in 496 B.C. The siege in your generation happened in 1948 when Judea was taken. Third siege A.D. occurred in 1967 just the well-known Six-Day War. This was when the city was smitten, leading the false prophet Arnold Murray to declare in 1980, It is written, One worldism shall come to pass, and it shall receive a deadly wound about the end of this year. Ezekiel observed the Millennium Temple being built, which was our 1981. With this being the year 1980, we will not have to wait long to see. One doesn't have to be the sharpest knife in the drawer to recognize that one worldism is anything but dead, much less suffering a deadly wound in 1980. The unintended consequence of Murray and his followers' anti Zionism, like all anti Zionism, is that it advances the 1400 year goal of Islam, which is the conquest of all kingdoms of the world and subjugation of all people to Muhammad's followers. Not a surprise goal for Islam since the kingdoms of this world have been Satan's legal possession ever since Adam's fall. Conquest of Israel is just one stop along the way, just as it was during the Islamic first jihad that conquered nearly the whole known world until stopped all the way up into France and Austria. The same follower of Murray had actually been fooled into believing that it bleeds for the Palestinian Christians that had enjoyed freedom of religion and protection under the Israelis. But what is their fate today under so-called Palestinian control thanks to anti-Zionists like him cheering on Israel's enemies? Christians must accept Islamic rule. Missionaries will be dealt with harshly. Christians can only continue living safely in the Gaza Strip if they accept Islamic law, including a ban on alcohol and women roaming publicly without proper head coverings. The expression, women roaming publicly, suggests, for example, Saudi Arabia, where husbands lock their wives in their homes all day and where women are arrested for driving cars. This is the Sharia law that the Saudis are exporting all around the world, including the mosques and university Islamic centers the Saudis are building here in the U.S. To some Muslims, an unescorted woman is an invitation to rape, and since under Sharia law an allegation of rape must be supported by witnesses, the perpetrator gets an automatic free pass. Web search the subject of rape in Islam, and rape of women in Sweden by Muslims, for example. It would seem that some of Muhammad's followers view Sweden as a conquest, and thus Swedish women as the equivalent of infidel captives, and so do as Muhammad and his followers did. I entered the mosque, saw Abu sat beside him and asked about sex. Abu Sa'd said, we went out with Allah's apostle and we received female slaves from among the captives. We desired women and we loved to do coitus interruptus. If a follower of Muhammad tries to tell you that passage is from a corrupted source, simply go to an online hadith and type the keyword coitus into the search box to find it repeated several times in their most respected Sahib Bukhari. The Islamic conquest of the world during the Second Jihad has resulted in the killing or displacing two million Africans in the Sudan alone, the thousand Christians being killed by the new Muslim government on the Ivory Coast of Africa, and churches being bombed and burned in many countries with over 18,000 deadly Islamic terror attacks around the world just since 9-11. When inquired of by a Kuwaiti delegation, according to several Arabic news sources last Monday, 
The Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia declared that it is necessary to destroy all the churches of the region. That's not some random imam, but the Grand Mufti of the land that hosts the Arabian rituals of the Hajj and Umrah that focus on a Kaaba that houses the Quraysh pagan's black stone idol the Muhammad's followers prostrate themselves toward five times a day. Any Zionist appeasing of Muhammad's followers, thereby advancing their conquest of Israel, will only net the same result as Chamberlain's appeasement of Hitler did to Jews, and as evidence to Gaza will be perpetrated against Christians as well. Characteristic of other cults of false prophets, like Muhammad and Islam, Arnold Murray warned his followers that those that aren't with him are not with God. In reference to his now failed parallels through which he made his false prophecies in 1980, he quipped, Beloved, if you believe that all that is a coincidence, then you are not one of God's elect. Murray apparently not being much of a student of the Bible. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Indeed, anyone who would have passed Murray's failed parallels off as a coincidence would have been correct, while Murray is demonstrated to have prophesied falsely. So which one would more likely not be one of God's elect? Murray's focus on the flesh in assigning the fiction of his Kenite lineage to Jews in Israel, even if it weren't preposterous, would have nothing to do with how a Jew is defined in the Christian era. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, and neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. Thus faithful Jews are the only Jews there are in God's eyes, whether they happen to live in Israel or Peoria, Illinois. Yet Murray's followers point the finger and declare Jews that happen to live in Israel to be in the synagogue of Satan based not on the condition of the individual's heart, but rather based on the happenstance of where they live while falsely labeling them Kenites. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. While Murray's followers are quick to assign that synagogue to Jews in Israel, who, might we surmise, are the ones that may actually be in the synagogue of Satan? The accused or the accusers that believe themselves to be grafted in among God's people but reject Genesis 4.1 to follow Arnold Murray's serpent seed doctrine. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be false accusers, fierce, despisers of those that are good, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. In the book of Romans we learn of the good olive tree, and if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, we branches of the wild olive tree that have been grafted in among the branches of the good olive tree partake with them in the root and the fatness of the good olive tree. All faithful Jews in Israel or anywhere else are Jews. We are saved by the condition of our hearts, not by the happenstance of our birthplace or genetic makeup. Some Jews may not yet recognize Jesus as their Messiah because God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes they should not see and ears they should not hear unto this day. That was penned well after the cross. We have been advised regarding this mystery, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel 
until the fullness or full number of the Gentiles be come in. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Enemies of the gospel, but beloved. For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Those irrevocable gifts include everlasting possession of all the land of Canaan that God gave to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through an everlasting covenant. What could cause men to desire to reject Genesis 4.1 and go so far afield as to claim that Cain was Satan's son by accepting Satan's, Hitler's, Murray's serpent seed doctrine? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. In Second Thessalonians we learn we are to expect a falling away or apostasy. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Please see the video on the man of sin. This apostasy has been going on for over a century through 19th century born cults of false prophets and teachers, but in earnest for over the last half century by the church abandoning the preaching of repentance in favor of counterfeit movements like prosperity doctrines, ecumenism, religious pluralism, and abominations like the Chris Lam movement. While it's almost too terrible to contemplate, later in the passage we learn, because they receive not the love of truth, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Since we can't know God's judgment, we can only wonder where that leaves those that have so little love of truth that they reject Genesis 4.1 as understood through nearly 2,000 years of Christian core doctrine to instead accept the serpent seed, false presumptions and machinations of men only to discover themselves among the evil rotted fruit of a corrupt tree that includes Nazis, skinheads, and the KKK. Accepting a doctrine of devils that was embraced by Hitler as a pretense for the mass murder of millions of Jews during the Holocaust and is embraced today by the false teacher and false prophet Arnold Murray. It isn't like we weren't warned. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. If you are a more conventional Christian anti-Zionist in the liberal wing of the church that has been indoctrinated into replacement theology that springs from partial preterist eschatology, which holds that most of the book of Revelation was fulfilled in the first century, I beg you to please honestly and prayerfully investigate the source of your end time doctrine. Try a web search of Jesuit Louis Alcazar, who created his false 17th century eschatology of preterism in a Roman Catholic anti-reformation effort. While you may not share Arnold Murray's serpent seed heresy, you are fruit of the anti-Zionist tree that includes Nazis, skinheads, Muslims, David Duke and the KKK, Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, and anti-Semites of all stripes. I would further encourage you to consider a study of Revelation within the traditional continuous historic context, completely on its own merit, by reading the free online book the False Prophet by Ella Schofield that is available at the third link below this video. For over 30 years, Brother Schofield has written about Islam as the final foe of God's people in Bible prophecy. 
May God bless you and lead us all in all truth. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.